together with more than a thousand groups of grassroots interfaith peace builders in more than 100 countries, we welcome I've been changing channels, I don't see them on the TV shows. Where all the good people go? Many of us are inundated with a seemingly unending torrent of negative images and ideas spout forth from the digital devices that are our gateway to nearly all public discourse. Why? Because it works. It gets our attention. We are hardwired to prioritize and react to danger, real and perceived. People bent on fame, money, or political power know this. They are hijacking our attention, not for a good cause, but for a click, a like, or a quick buck. There is and always has been an answer to this attack. It is called story. I got a phone call from the United Nations saying they'd like to come to San Francisco, 50th anniversary of the UN Charter. And they said, our vision is that we'd like to bring all the nations of the world, uh, we'll have 185 ambassadors, and we'd like you to bring all the religions of the world and all the religious leaders. <laughs> a well-told story can bypass the primitive parts of our brain and evoke emotions and ideas that unify us, empower us, allow us to share dreams of a better day. Uh, you know, when you're entering into something that's so outrageous, uh, you go to bed at night and you're lying there and you're thinking, why did I say yes to that? Uh, I don't know anything about Buddhists. I don't, I don't know anything about Hinduism. The longer I lay there in February of 1993 and thought about it, I was thinking, come on now. The nations have met every day for 50 years to struggle together for global good. And in the same 50 years, the religions of the world haven't spoken to each other, not for one minute. Bill Swing has always been a maverick. When I met him in 1981, he was doing cutting edge work with HIV AIDS here in San Francisco at a time when even doctors were refusing to touch age patients, Bill would go into the hospital, the Bishop of California would go into the hospital and sit with patients with HIV AIDS and hold their hands and kiss their forehead and just comfort them. And I was thinking, who's more moral in terms of having a vocation for the world, the nations or religions? And nations aren't very good, but religions are worse. And so Bill went off on this, this kind of crazy dream of bringing the religions of the world together to work for peace. And I, I said, um, I commit the rest of my life to, to being a catalyst for the creation of a united religions. I didn't know how to get there. I didn't know what it would look like. I didn't have any money. Uh, but I thought, okay, here goes the adventure. The, the story goes that he went around the world to talk to all the great religious leaders of the world to say, come join me. And together we'll bring the religions together and we'll create peace in the world. So I went to speak with the Pope and the Dalai Lama and Mother Teresa and the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Shankaracharya of Kanchipuram and the Grand Mufti and the Sheikh of al -Azhar. And they're like, no, I mean, you can't think of anybody I didn't go visit. And I asked him one question, a simple question. Are you willing to deputize a person from your tradition to meet with a deputy from other traditions? And uh, every one of the religious leaders said, uh, absolutely not. And I said, okay, it's not going to happen with religious leaders. And I thought, who's left? Uh, it's the grassroots people. And then it dawned on me, they're the only people who could ever make it happen. This is a story of a remarkable organization embarking on a global effort to use the power of story as an instrument of unity and peace. It is called URI or United Religions Initiative. It is a kind of United Nations of people of all beliefs, including atheists and agnostics. This is how it works. At least seven people come together to tackle a cause. The only requirement is that they represent at least three different religions or belief systems. 
This is called a cooperation circle. They do something together. Build a school, expose an injustice, fight poverty, rally against hate and violence. There are now a thousand of these cooperation circles in more than a hundred countries. Come with us now and see the power of story. So it was just two months ago that we were all together in San Francisco at the conference of grassroots peace builders from all over the world and policymakers from the UN. And it's incredible now to be here. Uh, way uh, back in 20 years when we start URI uh, in Africa, and we were talking, is it really possible to have this kind of grassroots movement within Africa where we can bring the different faith communities to work together. I would say the seed we planted way back now bear a fruit, and indeed it become a reality with more than 210 member organizations, a cooperation circle, a grassroots organization in 32 Africa country. For me, it's interesting that you talk about seeds being planted, because yeah. I think in our time together at Stanford and San Francisco, we planted new seeds yes. at that moment in time as well. You took the old roots of URI 20 years ago, yeah. and you replanted new relationships with other organizations. Yeah. So URI started with the grassroots, right? Yes. It started with cooperation circles, ordinary people from all over the world come together and starting these groups. They use their own mechanism to ensure that there is peace among communities, individuals, and, and that is the learning that cuts across the network, and I love that. It introduced a new way to get involved in deep partnership around this larger work of interfaith yes. peace building in a global context. I think people often misunderstand the work we do. They think it's about bringing like religions together. When I see our work on the ground, it's about bringing all people together because all people have beliefs, whether they're religious or spiritual or yes. humanistic, it doesn't matter. The beauty of it is it sets up a value system yes. that adheres to some tenets that are common amidst different religions, yes. beliefs, and traditions. Oh, do you know what we may need? And more, more here, and more, more there. But it is a reminder that deep down in the core of our beliefs, whether they be spiritual, indigenous, however secular, however you define it, we can be connected, yeah. we can find commonalities, we can celebrate our similarities, yeah. and let us accept that invitation to work together and to live together. We go to the community so that we can learn and listen, and that the wisdom of the community, the local community, can help teach us. I have very strong and resilient women who work so hard and who are there to make the world a better place. Human rights is a very uh, key aspect here mm. in Uganda, given the, the political situation. The Golden Women's Vision in Uganda uh, is composed of women, they suffered rape during abduction. Many of them were abducted as young as 10 years. So they were taken as, as wives to the rebels. They, they had to do all sorts of evil, commit all evil against their own relatives, against their own community members. The war caused death to many people. The war did not distinguish between Muslim, Catholic, or Anglican, or uh, Orthodox, but any. So we said we must come together. We put aside our differences, despite of our way of belief. 
but we should come together for the common purpose and our people live in peace because indeed the region was highly ravaged by war. Children were being abducted, women being abused. During the insurgency in northern Uganda, uh, the rebels came to our village called Paton. I was abducted when we were in running, we were, we were in a hide with my sister. My sister was two months pregnant, so she held my hand as we were running. So when we ran, we had a bullet where they shot her. She was holding, I was holding her with my right hand. Then she fell. Immediately, the rebel came and started again slaughtering her like an animal. I was at the age of 13 years old. They took me to the rebel leader, Joseph Cohn himself. He had about, about uh, during that time, he was having 43 wives. If we don't do anything to end the suffering of these children, they will continue to suffer. Where will we have a future for these people of Northern Uganda? There will no future. So that was, that was the reason why we, we decided to die together with them in the bus park here, because at this time, all of them would be here. And this place was being used by children who were running from abduction. An idea came from one of us that, why don't we really show solidarity with the children of Northern Uganda who are running away from fear of abduction by the rebels? If you want people, you want to cut the attention of the people, you want to draw fixed attention, and you want them to rush to find a solution, create a thick smoke. Everybody will run to find out what's happening there. Sleeping on the, in the bus park was creating a thick smoke. So we walked from different directions. Him, the Muslim, the Anglican, the Orthodox, and then myself, Catholic. We walked. The first day, the children saw us moving. Said, what is happening with our leaders? Four, four nights. And then the whole world was here. When we were here, that, the first night, there was a lot of shooting on this side. So they said, why should we risk our lives? We said, if you don't have protection for our children, why should you have protection for us? If, if the children are going to die, we are going to die with them. We say this, that children are the future of any tribe, the future of any nation, the future of the all international community are children. Violence appears to be very powerful, but in front of peace, violence is powerless. You can see now. But because of peace now, and with the new development that has taken place here, the place is booming, booming in business. Here now, you see the number of vehicles around and the boom of business after receiving peace. When I came back after three years, started to realize there's a reason for me to stay alive. Then I registered with the aim of supporting the survivors, supporting the women. I could bring them around me. I see a mother in them. I say to myself, so long as I'm still alive, I will try with all my level best to create any possibilities for the women, for those who suffer during war in Northern Uganda. We have stories. The place where we are right now is called Bwaise in Kampala, which is one of the biggest slum areas around Kampala. Mm. And it houses over 90,000 people. These are people who live on less than a dollar a day. 
And these young people, basically what Africa does is to try and try support them by giving them an opportunity for vocational trainings, entrepreneurship trainings. Dafa, tell me about how all this got started and how do you get involved in this? All of my life I've been passionate about giving support to people and changing young people's lives. So in 2009, me and my co-founders, we embarked on starting an organization that could benefit the people of this community. We were just little boys who grew up from this neighborhood. And we came together, we were thinking, uh, kids smiling, schools, hospitals, uh, initiatives that help young people to find employment. Well, Africa runs three thematic uh, areas, that is youth economic empowerment, education and health. So this program is basically there to support young people who have no access to those uh, tertiary institutions, yeah. but also another way of trying to, to, to fight unemployment, which is at a very high rate. This is our partner here. Yeah. He does the, the medication bit, so we refer all the young people who need medication to go in there for free services. That's great. We run a community school. We don't That's have right. any government school. That, uh, that can give them an opportunity to have formal education. Jeff, you know how people say that young people are the future, the future leaders. Well, you know, we don't believe that. URI doesn't believe that. URI believes that young people are the leaders now, and you exemplify that. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Leadership starts now, now, yes. and we are the leaders. Now, if I may give an example, when you look at slum areas, they are targeted areas when it comes to radicalization. So when we're trying to help communities to empower themselves and build peace, a lot of it's about giving opportunity, isn't it? Because when people are shut off from the opportunity to engage their own lives in their communities, that's when they're vulnerable to getting picked off, as you said. Yeah. I come from a big Muslim family of more than 20 children. You know, in Uganda, we have been so much in the news as perpetrators of violent extremism, we decided to come up and do a lot of interfaith work to get together to create a movement or campaign that can show, okay, Muslims can be at the forefront of promoting peace and doing other projects that promote community. It's a predominantly Muslim community, but one of our first events we did was a Christmas party when we started, and I guarantee 80% of the kids that went for the party were Muslims. Being the young leaders of today, we are now embarking on challenging all the negative aspects around this world. Our initiative, AFCAD, AFCAD is founders. Two founders are Muslims, two founders are Christians. Right. It starts from there, then it's spread from the community. We are one people. Yeah. We've got to create this kind of platform where we support each other, love each other, and live in a very stable community. Yes. And uh, that challenge of like uh, people fighting over religions is done. So Jaffa, you guys have become so successful and renowned for your work here in this community, in Kampala, in Uganda, but also around the world. Tell me more about the URI Afghan connection. URI gave us technical support huh. in terms of guidance on how to do stuff, uh, in terms of giving us capacity on how to run an organization. Yeah. Afghan and URI have lived this relationship where the mentoring and training helped you guys get going. Yeah. And now you become a mentor and teacher for other organizations around the world, other communities who could do what you do. It's not about the religions, it's about the peace, it's about the development that we need for our communities. This is Karikyam International Public School in South India, where we have a URI unit also. We call it Interfaith Students Movement. It's a one of the URI cooperation circle. It's uh, working with youth. We have kids from five years old to 15 years old. We are promoting interfaith harmony with them. Uh, Dr. Abraham Karikam is my mentor. I joined URI as a member in 2009. On that time, I, uh, I was 14 years old. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
You have a story. I have a story. And when we come together and we engage our community, our work, this world together, you are I, you and I become one. We create a new story together. There's something that connects us and we may feel that spiritually, but we can live that out. To inaugurate this computer laboratory. And now in Kerala, we have 56 cooperation circles. And also, URI has 14 action areas, and we are mainly focused on interfaith peace building and youth empowerment. We are going to Kollam, which is an ancient city of Kerala. There, we have one of our very, very famous URI cooperation circles, which is called Zero Limit CC. Now they are running an institute of psychological studies. It is called the Lade Institute, and uh, we have graduate students doing psychological studies. So I am Dr. Mohanlal. I'm a psychologist. I conducting training programs and awareness sessions in schools and colleges for youth and public. Myself, Dr. Devi Dash. I'm also a psychologist, and uh, we together uh, with him, I'm also conducting many campaigns, programs, and training programs, awareness session for youth, and much more. And they travel to various schools and colleges, and they are giving a series of training programs, building up our students as budding peace builders. Every problem comes from the heart of the people. So we'll have to teach the students about peace and inner peace, and uh, then only we can have a beautiful living. Uh, greetings to all. My name is Fatima Hakim. I am a, first year, a second year psychology student at Latin Institute of Social Science. I'm a member of URS Zilajan Sisi. She uh, is a Hindu. I am a Muslim. There is no difference here. Uh, when we came to URL Zero CC, we came to know that every religion is equal, which doesn't mean that I am accepting um, other religion, but it means that I am seeing other religion and respecting it. When we go to them and say, we are from the United Religions Initiative, we would like to start a project, and they are like, is this some sort of conversion or thing? Is it like any Jesus is coming, like music and all? <laughs> we have to make them understand that there's nothing to do with conversions and all. This is an organization giving a platform for religions to come together and respect other religions. All the times I thought, what can a single man like me do for a global cause? There's a theory, the butterfly theory, you know? Like a, pink, a single flap of a butterfly creates a ripple in the universe. So everyone matters. That's the URI. Hence, every religion matters. We're at Karakum International Public School today, setting up with almost 800 students from four schools to do a children's peace march across the city of Karakum. The International Day of Peace and the children are gathered to speak about peace, to sing about peace, to march for peace, to chant for peace. It's an incredibly exciting day as people around the world celebrate the International Day of Peace. My generation came and went. I know that my music is not their music. I know their metaphors and language is not my metaphor and language. And, uh, but it belongs to Victor. It belongs to those people in the office. It belongs to the youth. Abraham, we're starting the International Day of Peace. Tell us about this. Yeah, every year we are having this peace march led by children, declaring to the world that children are for peace. 
This has become an important festival in the village of Karikyam. And in your school, people of all beliefs, all religions come together, they learn about each other, they study peace yeah. together. Yeah. In our school, we have uh, children from all religions. So all our students know about other religions. They are not their enemies. You are, I proved, that when people of diverse beliefs come together to work on issues that matter, we can create a culture of peace, justice, and healing for all. For the visionaries, I'm Sam Waterson.